Hey everyone, it's Professor Clark, and in this lecture, we are going to go over noun endings in the genitive plural. I hope you are feeling strong. This is probably one of the most difficult things you will go over this semester. Well, actually, the use of verbal aspect in the long term will turn out to be more difficult. But as far as what you have to learn right now, noun endings in the genitive plural are pretty challenging for most intermediate level students, uh, even more challenging than clock time. So do whatever rituals you need to do in order to prepare yourself for this great battle that is about to commence, and let's go ahead and jump into it. Let's start off by going over some general rules for the genitive plural. How does the genitive plural work? The genitive plural is much more challenging than other plural endings because we don't have just, oh, you add om or you add yam, or you add och or you add yach. Uh, there are more endings than that, and there's a complex set of rules for when to use them that is not just, oh, these are for hard stem and these are for soft stem nouns. Uh, it's more complicated than that. So the thing to keep in mind is that overall, the genitive plural is the opposite of the nominative singular. So if a noun has some kind of an ending, like an ah or an ee yeah or something like that in the nominative singular, it will lose that ending in the genitive plural. If it does not have an ending in the nominative singular, if it ends in a zero ending, if it just ends in a consonant, it will gain some kind of an ending in the genitive plural. Also, and we're not going to go over fill vowels in this lecture, but just bear in mind that nouns that have a fill vowel in the nominative singular will lose the fill vowel in the genitive plural, just as they do anytime you add an ending. But nouns that have a hidden fill vowel in the nominative singular, where they have a fill vowel, but you don't see it in the nominative singular, will gain that fill vowel in the genitive plural. So just bear that in mind, and we'll go over that in more detail on a separate lecture on fill vowels. But remember, anytime you have an ending or a fill vowel in the nominative singular, you lose it in the genitive plural. Anytime you don't have it in the nominative singular, you gain it in the genitive plural. Okay, let's jump into the actual endings. Uh, before we do that, I'll just say that I have birds outside my window that are just cheeping up a storm. I will try to edit them out in post-production, but you may get the occasional bird sound coming into the lecture, and hopefully that will be a pleasant and relaxing distraction. Okay, let's talk about the first type of genitive plural ending, and that is for nouns that end in a vowel in the nominative singular. So if a noun ends in a hard vowel, so a or o in the nominative singular, it will lose that vowel and have a zero ending in the genitive plural. So sabaka will become sabak, mama will become mom, miesta will become miest. And in this situation, most unusually, feminine and neuter nouns have the same ending. So normally masculine and neuter nouns have the same ending, but in the genitive plural, feminine and neuter nouns form a group. So it doesn't matter if the final vowel is an a ah or an o, oh. it doesn't matter if the noun is feminine or neuter. In the genitive plural, you're going to drop that a ah or o oh and have a zero stem or bare ending. If the noun ends in ya ja in the nominative singular, it will drop that ya ja and end a myachisnach in the genitive plural. So it will also be a zero or bare stem ending, but because the final consonant is soft, we're going to keep that softness by adding a soft sign. So nidielia, for example, will become nidiel. Now this is the rule, but in fact, there are many, many exceptions. So just keep your eyes open for them and we may go over more of them later. However, at the moment, Remember that nidelia becomes nidiel with a soft sign, and this is how it should be in theory. And then if we have a noun that ends in e ya or e ye in the nominative singular, it will drop the final ya or ye and add ikratkaya, thereby becoming e, that is to say e ikratkaya in the genitive plural. So lexia becomes lexi and zanyatia becomes zanyati. 
And once again, it doesn't matter whether it's feminine or neuter, the same thing happens. We drop that final vowel and we get a consonantal ending. Remember that ikratkoya is actually a consonant. And what we're seeing is the actual stem of the noun. So really a noun like zanyatiya or lyeksiya is e ikratkoya dash a. The final sound in a noun like that is a or e. And so we're dropping that final a or e, and we're seeing the actual stem, which is an ikrakoya, which is this sort of y sound at the end. So that's all a lot of theory that you probably don't really need to know. Just remember that lyxia becomes lyxi with an ikrakoya, and zanyatia becomes zanyati with an ikrakoya. Next, we have nouns that end in hushers or myachisnak, and these can be either masculine or feminine. It doesn't matter, they take the same endings. So if they end in a husher, zh, ch, sh, or sha with a tail, and all of these are going to be masculine, we will add ye in the genitive plural. So vrach, doctor, becomes vrachi. Garash, garage, becomes garaji. Etash, floor or story of a building, becomes etage. If the noun ends in a myakisnak in the nominative singular. We will drop the myakisnak and add ye for the genitive plural for both masculine and feminine nouns. Once again, with the genitive plural, the gender doesn't really matter, it's just the ending that matters. And so we have, for instance, pripadavatil, college instructor, becomes pripadavatilye. Muish, a mouse, both the animal and a computer mouse, becomes muishe. And note that mat, mother, becomes matere, and doch, daughter, becomes dechere. As always, when we add an ending to these two nouns, the yer suffix appears. Now let's look at nouns that end in consonants other than a husher or a soft sign. And these are all going to be masculine nouns. If they end in a hard consonant in the nominative singular, we're going to add of in the genitive plural. So magazine becomes magazinov. Note that we write o v, but because the v is in word final position, we pronounce it f. Magazine, magazinov. Computer, computerov. Bank, bankov. If the noun ends in an ikratkoya, we're going to drop the ikratkoya and add yef. And again, we write ye v, but because that v is in word final position, we pronounce it f. So, musei, museum, becomes museev. Geroi, hero, becomes geroiev. Tramvai, tram, becomes tramvaiev. And then where things get complicated is with nouns that end in tz. And because of the five-letter spelling rule, with these nouns we have to know where the stress is to add the correct ending. If they are end-stressed, we will add of, just like any other hard consonant noun. So, atietz, atsof. However, if they are stem stressed, we can't write o after that ts, and we will write yef. So miesitz, month, becomes miesitzef, written ye ve. Amerikanitz, American man, becomes amerikansef, written ye ve. So that was it for the regular endings for the genitive plural. And on slide six in the PowerPoint, I have a list of regular endings in the genitive plural. And let's look over them quickly. The possible regular endings are a zero ending, where we drop any final vowel. Uh, so papa would become pop, kniga, knig, miesta, miest, and so on and so forth. If we have a ya at the end of the word, uh, so consonant ya, we should drop the ya and add a myakiznak. So nidelia becomes nidiel, with a myakiznak written after the l. And then we have these e ikratkaya endings, where ie or iya go to e ikratkaya, so lexia, lexi, zanyatiye, zanyati, abshijitiye, abshijiti. Then we have ye endings, where if we have a husher at the end of the word, or we have a myakisnak, we will add ye. 
uh, dropping the мягкий знак if there is one. So преподаватель, преподавателье, словар, словарье, этаж, этаже, москвич, uh, man from Moscow, москвичье. And then we have off endings, where if we have a zero stem in the nominative singular, just a hard consonant, we will add off in the genitive plural. Computer, computerov, bank, bankov. And note, отец becomes отцов and близнец becomes близнецов because these are end-stressed words. So we can write о after the ts. And then finally, we have yef endings, where if we have any kratkaya, we will drop that and add yef. So tramvai, tramvayev, geroi, geroyev. And we will also use yef for stem-stressed words ending in ts. So, Amerikaniets, Amerikansev, Kanadiets, Kanadsev. Now, let's look at some nouns that are a little bit more unusual. And let's start with nouns that end in a stressed myakiznak ya in the nominative. And this can be either the nominative singular or the plural. If you see a stressed myakiznak ya in either form of the nominative, then they will take a stressed yi ending in the genitive plural. So, for instance, simya, family, uh, becomes simyi, or statya, article, becomes stati. And notice that these nouns have the stressed myakiznak ya in the nominative singular. Simya and statya are nominative singular, and we have simyi, stati in the genitive plural. If we have this myakiznak stressed ya in this nominative plural, we have the same thing. So, друзья is nominative plural, and it becomes друзьи in the genitive plural. Mujia, nominative plural, becomes muje, genitive plural. Sinovya, nominative plural, becomes sinovyi, genitive plural. The next class of nouns has a myakiznak ya in the nominative plural, but it is stem stressed. So, we have this unstressed myakiznak ya in the nominative plural. And these nouns are going to take myakiznak ye v in the genitive plural. So bratya, nominative plural, becomes bratyev. Stulya, chairs, nominative plural, becomes stulyev. Platya, dresses, nominative plural, becomes platyev. Our next class of nouns are these mya nouns, these neuter nouns ending in m ya. And those are going to end in yon in the genitive plural. So imya, first name, becomes imyon in the genitive plural. Vremya, time, becomes vrimyon in the genitive plural. The next couple of classes of nouns are not in the textbook, but because we went over them in the textbook with the nominative plural, I wanted to go over them with the genitive plural as well. And this first group are these anin nouns, these nouns that end in anin or anin that indicate citizenship. And those, remember, they have anin in the nominative singular, anya in the nominative plural, and they're just going to end in an in the genitive plural. And this is one of those cases that I warned you about where you would think that you would have a soft consonant and you would need to add myakiznak, but we don't. Sometimes nouns that have a soft consonant as their final consonant in the nominative or in other cases will suddenly get a hard ending. The consonant will suddenly become hard in the genitive plural and only in the genitive plural. So grajdanin, citizen, becomes grajdan with a hard n, no myakiznak. And note the stress shift as well. Anglichanin, Englishman, becomes anglichan, hard n. Rasianin, a citizen of the Russian Federation, becomes Rasian, hard N. Pavlovchanin, a man from Pavlova, becomes Pavlovchan. And as a side note, there aren't a huge number of these nouns, but they are quite important, like Grajdanin and Rasianin. Uh, to indicate citizenship or residency in some place, you can use either these anin nouns or the yets nouns, like Americaniets, Canadiets, Irlandiets, and so on. And yets is more common, but there are still a few important ones with these anin endings.
so you do need to know how to decline them. The next group are these yonic nouns that denote baby animals. And so if they end in yonuk or sometimes onuk in the nominative singular and yata or ata if the eight letter spelling rule is in effect in the nominative plural, they're going to end in yat or at in the genitive plural. So it's kind of a regular genitive plural in that they end in a hard vowel and we drop the vowel and we just have this bare stem ending. So yata becomes yat. But the difficult thing is that the stem is the plural stem and not the singular stem. So katyonuk, kitten, becomes katyata in the nominative plural and then katyat in the genitive plural. Utyonuk, duckling, becomes utyata in the nominative plural and utyat in the genitive plural. Midvijonuk, bear cub or teddy bear, becomes midvijata in the nominative plural and midvijat in the genitive plural. And note how we have this onak and then ata. And then valchonak, wolf cub, becomes valchata in the nominative plural and valchat in the genitive plural. And you might say, how often do we really use these nouns? How often do you talk about baby animals? You would be surprised how often it comes up in Russian. Uh, baby animal nouns are actually quite important and are used quite frequently. So you do want to be able to at least recognize them and hopefully talk about them. Next, we have some unusual ye nouns. Some nouns that take ye in the genitive plural when you wouldn't expect them to. So sasied, neighbor, is hard stem in the singular, but soft stem in the plural, and it takes a ye ending in the genitive. So sasiedye. Djadja, uncle, becomes djadye, and tjotja, aunt, becomes tjotje. You will see occasionally the endings djad and tjot, which is what you would expect, and people do sometimes use that, but the correct endings for djadja and tjotje are generally considered to be djadje and tjotje in the genitive plural. On slide 13 of the PowerPoint, we have another chart where I've laid out some of the unusual endings. So let's go over it quickly. If you have a stressed ya, so myak is not stressed ya in the nominative, either singular or plural, you will get stressed ye in the genitive plural. So simya, simye, statya, statye, druzya, druzye, muzya, muzye, synovya, synovye. If you have myakiznak unstressed ya in the nominative plural, you will get myakiznak unstressed yef in the genitive plural. So bratya, bratyev, stulya, stulyev, platya, platyev, and derevya, derevyev. Uh, Dirva is tree, and it's neuter, hard stem neuter in the singular, and then it becomes derevya, derevyev in the plural. And then mya is going to become yon. So, imya, first name, imyon, vremya, time, vremyon, plemya, tribe, plemyon, znamya, banner, znamyon. Anin will become an, grajdanin, grajdan, rasianin, rasian. Yonak or onak will become yat or at. So, tidionak, calf, tilyat, tsiplionak, chick, tsiplyat, midvijonak, bear cub or teddy bear, midvijat. And then we have the nouns that unexpectedly get ye. Sasied, sasiedye, tjotje, tjotje, djadje, djadje. And then we have nouns that don't change. There are a handful of nouns, not very many, but they are important, that have genitive plural forms that are exactly the same as the nominative singular. And we already talked about ras, time, as in one time, two times, three times, is ras in the genitive plural. So ras stays ras, glas, I stays glas, saldat, soldier, is saldat, sapok, high boot, like a knee-high boot, uh, stays sapok, and then gram, a gram, and kilogram, a kilogram, both remain gram and kilogram in colloquial Russian. So technically it should be gramov and kilogramov, but people frequently just say gram and kilogram for the genitive plural.
And finally, we have a handful of nouns that take completely different words in the genitive plural. So gut, year, becomes liat. So remember, you have 21 gut, 21 years old, but 25 liat, 25 years old. Ribionak, baby or child, becomes ditie. However, there is this plural form ribiata in the nominative plural, which becomes ribiat in the genitive plural, which is the plural of ribionic, but it has this meaning of guys, as in, hey, guys, 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 what's going on? That's how you'd use ribiata. And there is no singular. You can't use ribionic as the singular in this form. Ribionic only means baby or child. Uh, and the plural with that meaning is but we do have this form ribiata ribiat with the meaning of guys. And then chilaviak person or human is ludie, except if you have a definite number, if you are counting and you have a specific number, the genitive plural of chilaviak is chilaviak. And this is something we will talk about more in the lecture on counting and using the genitive. So, I hope you feel enlightened. I know that was a lot. In fact, it's a huge amount and there could be more. We could have gone into more detail. We could have gone over more words. But those are the main forms of the genitive plural that you need to know. Uh, once again, this particular lecture had a huge amount of information in it. I recommend uh, going over it in chunks, um, go over the charts in the textbook, uh, go over the charts in the PowerPoint if you can, uh, maybe listen to it several times in little chunks, uh, download the mp3 or get the podcast if you can and listen to it while you're doing stuff to kind of soak it in a little bit more and just relax and try to take it in in little bits. So there you go. Next up, fill vowels.